Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're here preaching about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Son of Man, in hopes that the Spirit of God will touch hearts, that the Spirit of God will help you understand that there's only one way. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1, verse 28, or verse 18, the just shall live by faith. And that's the essence of what biblical Christianity is all about. That the only way that we can be made right with God Almighty is through the blood of Jesus Christ. And it's blood that is beautiful. It's the blood of the Son of God and the Son of Man. And there's no other way. There's no other way to be forgiven by God than by the blood of Jesus Christ. What's that? They don't believe in Midas around here. What's that mean? Midas muscular. Oh yeah, no kidding. For Paul writes, see we're people of the book. We're people of the book and Paul writes, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God. For it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. You see what that means is that the only way that we can be made right with the one and only holy Trinitarian self-existing God is through the mediator Jesus Christ through the person of Jesus Christ. And in Islam it says that Jesus was a prophet. And you are right in that. Jesus Christ most certainly was a prophet, but that's not all he was. Jesus Christ was also the Son of God and the Son of Man. Yet the prophet, the prophecy of Jesus Christ is that he has testified and shown to us that God Almighty has revealed his holy word to us in the pages of the Bible. It's through the working of the word and the spirit of God that God shows us, reveals to us his holy revelation. You see, Jesus is a prophet in the sense that he is the word of God and he has communicated to us by the Holy Spirit the Word of God in the pages of the Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation. That's the, how Jesus Christ is a prophet. He's a prophet because not only does he bring us the Word of God, but Jesus Christ also is the Word of God. And that's the beauty of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus was indeed a prophet, and we believe that. But the Bible says that Jesus was so much more. The Bible says that Jesus Christ was more than just a prophet. He was a prophet, and that's what Muhammad got right and Islam gets right. But where you don't get it right is the reality that Jesus Christ is Lord. You see, the Bible has certainly not been corrupted. That's why Jesus in his prophecy, Jesus in his holiness, has given us the reality that not only does he give us the word of God, but he is the word of God. You see, it says in John, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. You see, that's what the holy book says, and you know, well, you are people of the book, as the Quran calls us Christians, right? You need to respect the people of the book. Because we have the Word of God right here. And in the Word of God, the most important part of the Word of God is that Jesus Christ is Lord. You see, God has revealed Himself. We are monotheistic as Christians. We only believe in one God. Only one God. But three persons. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And God the Father, is what the Bible teaches, has sent Jesus Christ the Son. And because of the death of Jesus Christ, we have forgiveness of sins. You see, no other religion, how are you forgiven of sins? 
How are you forgiven of sins? And that's the question. How do you get rid of your sin? You see, the Bible says, for all have sinned. We've all broken the law of God, right? We've all broken the Ten Commandments, and even the Quran says that you're to believe Moses, right? Doesn't it? Right? And so we're supposed to keep the law of God, and the Bible defines sin as a transgression of the law of God, breaking of the law of God. So, for instance, like the Ten Commandments, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. That's the law of God. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, as they do all over the place. People cursing and using the name of Jesus and using, saying terrible things about God. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Honor thy father and thy mother. That's the law of God. You see? Thou shalt not kill. That's what the Bible says so clearly. Thou shalt not kill. And Jesus even said, that if you hate your brother in your heart, you've committed murder. So, because you've broken God's law, how then can you get rid of your sin? That's the question I have for you. And in Islam, the five pillars are not going to help you get rid of your sin. The Bible is very clear. The only way to get rid of your sin is by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the person and work of Jesus, the blood, the mediating blood of Jesus. Because Jesus Christ was the Word of God, who was God, He can be eternally the one who forgives us of our sin. Because the Word, as the Bible said, the Word was God. But it says in John chapter 1, verse 14, And the Word was God and dwelt among us. And so the biblical message is that God has come into this world. God has come into this world. And the reason, and that the way that God has come into the world is the way Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody comes to the Father but by me. I mean, Jesus Christ made that audacious claim. Jesus Christ, the prophet, said that nobody could come to God the Father, but through Him. And that's the power of what the Gospel is all about. That the only way that you could come to God the Father is through God the Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's right. And so we pray that the Spirit of God will open people's hearts, will change their hearts, and their minds. And their minds. Unless the Spirit of God takes away your heart of stone and gives you a heart of flesh, you cannot, Jesus says, you cannot see, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. And the only way that you can enter the kingdom of God is through the mediator, Jesus Christ, who is fully God and fully man. You see, the just shall live by faith. Those who are righteous, those who are holy, those who are pure must live by faith. It is only faith in the person and work of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. That's the only way. You see, you cannot, in the Old Testament, in the book of Moses, in the book of Moses, you have in the temple the Holy of Holies. And only the high priest, once a year, could enter in to the Holy of Holies, and the only way that the high priest, who has already been, had blood applied to him by an innocent animal, could come into the Holy of Holies is by the blood, showing, in, showing them that the only way that we could come in to the presence of God Almighty is by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, it's the blood of Jesus Christ alone that washes away sin. The five pillars cannot take away your sin. And that's the big problem in Islam. You can't get rid of your sin. The only way... What's that? I said, excuse me. Yeah, no problem, no problem. The only way that your sin can be taken away is by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And so you are called to believe Moses is a prophet. And Moses told you there is no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. 
And where is the blood in Islam? You see, in biblical Christianity, the blood is the blood that Jesus Christ shed on the, the cross. And the reason that that blood of Jesus Christ is so precious, the reason that the blood of Jesus Christ can forgive you of your sin. Oh, brothers and sisters, listen to me. The only way that our sins can be taken away, and Moses told us this, and the Bible tells us, there is no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. And in the, uh, in, in the Torah, they shed blood, always pointing to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Lamb of God. You see, how are your sins taken away? Biblical Christianity, our sins are taken away because the Son of God and the Son of Man has kept the law of God perfectly upon the cross. And when Jesus Christ died upon the cross, he died an innocent man. He never broke the law of God. You see, Jesus Christ never broke the law of God. The Bible is very clear that Jesus Christ kept the law of Moses absolutely perfectly in thought, word, and deed. But the Bible also says that anyone who breaks God's law cannot come into the presence of the Most High. And the reason we cannot come into the presence of the Most High is because God is light. God is light and in Him is no darkness whatsoever. God is holy, holy, holy. The Lord God of the Bible, it says in Isaiah chapter 6, He is holy, 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 and we are not. How can you get rid of your unholiness? How can you get rid of your sin? The only way that sin can be taken away is by the blood of Jesus Christ, my brothers. It's only by the blood of the perfect Lamb of God who was slain to take away the sin of the world. That's why the Torah that you guys are required to follow, you are required, right? Moses was a prophet, and Moses showed us that there is no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. And that's why Jesus Christ is called the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You cannot work your way to heaven. You cannot work your way, you cannot make yourself right with God Almighty by your good works. You can pray all you want. You can give all the alms you want to the poor. You can try all you want, but you cannot take away your sin by good works. And in fact, in the Bible says in Jeremiah that our works are as filthy rags before God. Our righteousness as as filthy rags before God. And what Jeremiah was talking about there, he was actually talking about menstrual cloths. That our works and our attempts of righteousness are as an unfertilized egg of a woman being washed out. Come on and talk, brothers. It's like the unfertilized egg of a woman being washed out. You see, that's human works. Human works cannot make you right with God. Prayer cannot make you right with God. Giving money to the poor cannot make you right with God. Going to worship cannot make you right with God. There's only one way to be made right with God. They say, you see, there's only one way, and that is through the shedding of blood it's through the shedding of blood. You see, the blood of Jesus Christ is the pure blood. You see, you and I, our blood has been tainted by sin. We have sinned before God. You and I, brothers, we have broken God's law. You know it and I know it. You agree with me on this. I know that we all have broken the law of God. But we, what we do not agree on is how we could be rid of our unrighteousness. Come on over and talk. How we could be made right with God. How we could be 
declared righteous before God Almighty. That's what all religions are trying to solve. How could you be made right with the one and only holy God? You cannot be made right with God by your works, by going to a place of worship. The only way that you can be made right with God, brothers, is by the person and work of Jesus Christ. That's what it means. The righteous shall live by faith. The righteous shall live by faith. Faith in what? You see, the Bible says, the Bible says that the righteous shall live by faith. The only way that you can be made right with God Almighty is by the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, Moses has said very clearly, and you all say that you believe in the Torah, and the Torah says there is no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. Yes or no? But it is not the blood of animals that will... Doing? What's that? What are you doing? I'm preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. To a mosque? What's that? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Because they need to hear the truth, and they're in deception under Mohammed. Sir, they're already going through something. Why are you harassing well, them? No, I'm not harassing them at all. I'm calling them the righteousness no, and holiness. They're, they're Absolutely, I am. So that, are you kill. are you Muslim? No. No. I looked the part Puerto Rican, sir. What's that? I looked the part Puerto Rican. Okay, yeah, well, that's fine. They're going through their own struggle. Oh, we all go through struggle. That's why we need Jesus Christ. Sir. See, they're in, they're in darkness, and the only way that you could get right with God, and this is the most important sir, question. But, no, it's that's not. That's absolutely it's not. how to be made right with God. Let them deal that, with their own thing. And I am. This I'm just talking. So you're going to talk Freedom to, of speech. How about Chinese? You're going to talk to Chinese this way? What's that? You're going to talk to Chinese this way? Absolutely. I talk to Puerto Ricans this way. I'll talk to anybody. Toda la gente necesita oír el Evangelio de Jesucristo. That there's only one way to be made right with God. And that is through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only way that you could have your sins forgiven. That's why the Bible says... That without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Listen, sir, if you want to contribute to it and have a conversation about salvation, great. But I'm preaching, and I have serious business to do. So oh, don't hinder me. Okay. Fine, Are you right? saved? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? No. No? See, then you're not right with God. The only way you could be but made right is through right Jesus. What's that? You don't need to be right with God have conversation. God, the you could only Lord through Jesus the blood Christ. of Jesus Christ. What's that? Uh, but I'm here to talk about Christ. Yeah. So I'm going to keep preaching. It's absolutely fair. What's that? And the only way that you could be made right with God Almighty, the only way, which is the big, which is the big question, the great question is how can you be made right with God? That's what you're asking yourself. That's why you come here. How could you be made right with God? You see, the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Without the shedding of blood, it is only by the blood of Jesus Christ, who is fully God and fully man, that you could be made right with the one and only holy, self-existing Trinitarian God. And so today, I'm calling upon you to repent of your sin. To repent of your sin. You see, the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all have broken the law of God. We all have violated the law of God. All the Ten Commandments we've all broken. We have had other gods before Him. We have made graven images. You see, we've broken the law of God. We've taken His name in vain. We have dishonored the Lord's Day. We have dishonored our fathers and our mothers, you see? We have hated in our hearts. That's a violation of God's law. To hate is not of God, it's a breaking of the law. To murder is breaking God's law. To commit adultery in thought, word, or deed. To have lust in your heart. To commit adultery. To cheat in your marriage. is to break the law of God. To lust after women 
is to break the law of God. And the Bible says we all have broken the law of God. To steal is to break the law of God. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not lie. That's breaking God's law. And to covet is to break God's law. And you see, you all believe in the Ten Commandments. We've all broken God's law. And because we've broken God's law, we cannot come into the presence of the one and only Holy God. The Bible says that God is light and in Him is no darkness whatsoever. We cannot come into His presence as sinners. We cannot come into His presence as lawbreakers. We cannot come into His presence as people that have violated the law of God. You see, that's how it's defined, that all those who have broken God's law cannot come into the presence of God, will eternally be separated from God. And so every human being that has ever been brought into the face of this earth cannot come into the presence of the one and only true, holy, self-existing God. There's no way that we can. But you see, the good news of the Bible, the good news of Jesus Christ, is that God has made a way. God has made a way through the person and work of Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible says that Jesus is more than just a prophet. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ said, I and the Father are one. Think about that. Jesus Christ was called the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God. The Son of God is not less than the Father, not at all. Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, takes away the sin of the world. The only way that we can be made right with God is through faith in the person and work of Jesus Christ and the work that He did upon the cross. You see, all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All those who put their hope and their trust in the person of Jesus Christ shall be saved. It's a promise from the Bible. Salvation is something that's now, but salvation is dependent upon what Jesus Christ has done. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, what He did upon the cross, when Jesus Christ went to the cross, Jesus Christ went to the cross Innocent. Pontius Pilate even said it. The civil magistrate of Rome declared to everybody that I find no guilt in him. And there was no guilt in Jesus. He was completely innocent, the Son of God and the Son of Man. And so when he went to the cross, when Jesus went to the cross, he went as an innocent man. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Verse 21, it says that God made him, talking about Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God. You see, that's the glory. I'll be glad to talk to you guys. Come on over and talk. You want me to come over there? All right. Watch my stuff. Uh, are you afraid? <laughs> That's okay. The Word of God, the Word of God is powerful. I'll be glad to talk. I respect your space. You see, yeah. The Bible says that God made him who knew no sin. In other words, Jesus Christ did not know sin. Jesus Christ was not a sinner like me. Jesus Christ was not a sinner like you. But God the Father made God the Son to be sin on your behalf. You see, what the Bible teaches is that God, the righteous one and only true, holy God, self-existing God, imputed the sin of sinful mankind upon the person and work upon Jesus Christ upon the cross. I'll be glad to come over and talk. Are you welcome to come on over? I'm just respecting your space. 
You see, God imputed the sinfulness of all those who believe in Christ upon the person of Jesus Christ. You see, that's the message of the gospel. And so God the Father imputed and punished Jesus Christ on behalf of sinners. That's what the cross is all about. The cross is all about God the Father punishing Jesus Christ, God the Son, upon the cross. God the Father poured out the punishment that sinners deserve upon Jesus Christ upon the cross. I'll be glad to talk with any of you. God the Father poured out his wrath towards sin. That's what happened on the cross. The cross is all about the wrath of God the Father towards sin, the punishment that sin deserves. God poured out that punishment upon innocent Jesus Christ. And the reason he did that is so that guilty sinners like you and me could be made right with God. Do you hear me? The only way you could be made right with God is by God imputing the sin of humankind upon Jesus Christ. And so it's by the blood of Jesus Christ that God takes away our sin. It's only by what Jesus Christ did upon the cross that we could have our sins forgiven. That's the exchange that God will forgive you, not because of the five pillars, not because of going to the mosque, not by going to church, but by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God and the Son of Man. That's the only way God can take away our sin. But you see, God will forgive you if you turn to Christ. And if you turn to Christ and you repent this day and trust in Jesus Christ, who is fully God and fully man, the God-man, God will forgive you on behalf of Jesus Christ. He will forgive you because of the purity of Christ. He will forgive you because he punished Jesus Christ on behalf of sinners over 2,000 years ago. And when God forgives you of your sin, and then the, something else happens. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, the next thing that happens is that God gives us the holiness of Christ. God the Father imputes the righteousness of Christ upon us guilty sinners. Hear me. Listen to me. I beg of you. I'm telling you the words of life the words of salvation, that God will give you the holiness and righteousness of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you believe in Christ this day, then you will see the love of God has been manifested towards us and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So that all who believe all who put their trust in Jesus Christ this day, God will forgive you on behalf of Christ, and he will declare you as righteous based upon the person and work of Jesus Christ. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the blood of Jesus Christ. We are justified. We are justified by no other way. We are made right. We are pardoned by God. By no other way. Come on over, brothers. Come on over and talk with me. Come on over and don't be afraid. The Bible, I will just share with you what the Bible says. And the Quran says to, be, to believe the people of the book. You see, I am a person of the book. I am a man of the book. I am a man who preaches the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the person of the book. I believe in Jesus Christ, the prophet, but I also believe in Jesus Christ, the high priest. I believe in Jesus Christ, the king of kings. 
I'm the Lord of Lords and I beg you today, I beg you today to repent of your sin, to turn and trust in Jesus Christ alone for your salvation. Someday you will stand before God. Someday you will stand before God. And if you do not have the blood of Christ applied to you, if you do not have the shed blood of Jesus Christ, if you do not have the righteousness of Christ, brothers, then God is going to say to you, depart from me, I never knew you. He's going to say that to all who reject Jesus Christ. Oh, brothers, come over and talk. Come over and let us pray for you. Come over and let us show you Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Then nobody comes to the Father but by me. You see, Jesus Christ not only told us the truth, Jesus Christ is the truth. Oh, come to Christ. I beg you, come to Jesus, the Son of God and the Son of Man. Trust in the blood of Jesus Christ alone. You see, the Jews, the temple has been destroyed. They have no, the only way they were made right with God was by faith. The only way anybody is made right with God is by faith in Jesus Christ. That's why it says in Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, the righteous, oh, the righteous shall live by faith. Those who are right before God, they are, we are declared righteous only by the blood of Jesus Christ, sir. Only by the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't walk away. Come on over and talk, brothers. You care about the things of God. Jesus Christ has shown us the Father. The Word has become flesh and dwelt among us. And He is filled with grace and truth. If you have seen Jesus, you have seen the Father. Oh, come, brothers. Come and talk to me. Come and trust in Christ alone. I come in peace. I come in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Prince of Peace. God bless you. I come with only the sword of the Word of God, the Word of God that is God breathed, that is God inspired, that tells us the way of God, the way of salvation. Trust, trust in God.